And my name is Stacy McClary, and I'm out of Manteca, California. And my little garage that I build bikes out of is called Stacy's Garage. This bike here, uh, my friend Willie, it goes back about three years ago. Willie had a terrible motorcycle wreck and, and died uh, right there in my town. And uh, it was about a year after his death. Willie's wife had passed away the year before, so he was by himself. They had, they had one girl, Sarah, and I didn't know Sarah, didn't know her. Sarah and her husband, Joe, came into Mantega. They lived in Santa Rosa, which was two and a half hours away. They came into Mantega to deal with her father's estate. The house, all he had, Willie had a lot of motorcycle stuff. And somebody had told Sarah, you need to call Stacy up, because Stacy will come over. And, and so Sarah calls me and says, uh, you need, I'm Sarah, I'm Willie's daughter, and I'm down, and we need to get rid of some of Dad's stuff and that. So I got a lot of parts from uh, out of his back garage, uh, and then this engine and transmission, and then the frame was actually in a little 10 by 10 shed, a metal shed that was all rusted out. This frame and engine and transmission were sitting on the ground, on the dirt. The only thing that saved them, it had a piece of plywood under it, but it was sitting there for 30 to 35 years, had been sitting in that shed. So when Joe got it out of the shed, him and another guy got it out, and I was standing there with Sarah. And when Sarah seen it, Sarah says, my dad, she remembered that. And she goes, that's been in there for like 35 years. She goes, my dad always said, I'm gonna build a Triumph Chopper. She goes, that was my dad's. And you know, Willie was a Harley guy like me. He had a whole garage full of Harleys. Well, and I told Sarah right then, I go, if you sell me that little bike, I'll build a chopper in honor of your dad. And she goes, let's do it. And I was gonna offer, I, I got it for $200. And I, I says, uh, I only lived across town. So I says, I don't have a whole lot of money on me. So she goes, what do you got on you? And, I opened up my wallet and I had two $100 bills and then I had about 50 or 60 more dollars. And I said, this is, and she's seen those 200s. And I said, this is all I got. But I go, I only live five minutes away. I could be back with more money. And she goes, that $200 will be just fine. And I go, are you sure? And she goes, yep. So I give her the $200. I got the engine, transmission, and frame. And then I told her I would build a a, tr a, a chopper in honor of her dad. I was always going to put Willie's name on it, and I thought about it. It was because of Sarah that this got resurrected, you know. So her name is right here, and uh, so it's pretty cool. And she's a young girl. She's probably 45 years old, about like my daughter. That's my uh, my kids are that age, so she's like another daughter to me, you know. So there, that's how the triumph came about, I, and that's been. A couple of years ago, it took me about a year to build this bike because I was working on other bikes at the same time, kind of, you know, and this one kind of scared me. I, I was telling her it scared me because I've never done a Triumph, so everything's a little bit different, you know, so I'm not afraid of them anymore. <laughs> this one has a special place in my heart because of Willie. This was out of his shed and, and you know, I became, to know, and Sarah, her husband, Joe, I've actually became good friends with Joe. He's a, he's a biker guy, and he took all of Willie's. Willie had quite a few bikes in that. Joe took all of them, as he should. He's a son-in-law. So Joe's got all of Willie's Harleys and stuff, you know. I got the Triumph. <laughs> yeah, when I put it together, I put this crazy long front end on it because I thought she had told me that her dad wanted a long front end and stuff. She was describing what he would want on it. So I built this thing with a with this front end on it and uh i did a lot of work on this front end and and it it end, i ended up cutting 15 inches off of this front end this gave the bike a whole different look but most importantly it gave it that i can get on it and ride it comfortably when i cut the front end down then i had to make me a new set of handlebars so i made me some really narrow because this bike's pretty skinny so i made me some really narrow little ape hangers something that's comfortable for me so that's why I build bikes that's comfortable for me to ride. <laughs> no, I've, I've painted several bikes, uh, some of my own. Uh, a good friend of mine that lives in the next town, he's painted several of my bikes for me over the years. And uh, he painted this one. And I come up with the colors. I've never had a gold bike. And I thought, man, I'm going to 
do me a gold bar. I don't know why I thought gold would be something. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I picked this gold. And I put a little bit of a cream color on it. I, I like doing that because it makes it look, uh, to me, it makes it look older. That's why I've, this bike here is why I, I two-tone most of my bikes. I two-tone them to make them look more nostalgic, you know. The brake and the shifter, they're opposite on these earlier Triumphs. So, you know, I'm used to braking over here and shifting with my left foot. This is totally opposite. I'm shifting over here and I'm braking over there. So that, it. Yeah, if you rode these all the time, it'd be easy, but I don't. I ride Harleys and I shift. So when I get on this thing, I really have to concentrate knowing that the brake is over there because I don't have a front brake. I don't, I don't put a front brake on none of my bikes. That's another thing I just don't do. Too cool for that? I, that's exactly. <laughs> I, you can't, you got to have a, when you ride a bike, you got to have it where it's a little bit dangerous and it makes it feel better to ride when it's dangerous. That is a brake on the front. That's an old Triumph brake that I found and I purposely put it on because it's a Triumph part. I tried to put Triumph parts on it when I built that wheel, but the brake is, nothing's hooked up on it, you know. So this one stays in the house just because it's smaller and lighter. And I told my wife when I got it done, I go, why don't I just put this one in the house? And she goes, what if it leaks oil on my beautiful floor? And I go, it won't. I'll put a cookie sheet underneath it. I have a few more that could actually go in there that would look good in the house. This would fit in the house because it's kind of a small bike, you know. I've been pretty much doing it my whole life. So when I was about 10 or 11, I started building mini bikes. So I had quite a little mini bike business going on. And then I bought a 32 Model B pickup when I turned 14. So then I started driving the pickup around, the scooter, no more mini bikes, got rid of all of them. And uh, it just went on from there. I've always had either some type of a hot rod or motorcycles or... So it's been, and then, so that was back in the early 60s. I'm, I'm 69 now, so I'm one year away from being 70. And 70 is not so old anymore. I thought 70 was old, but it's not. Maybe 80 will be old, but <laughs> not 70. I think I got 10 more years left in me of, of uh, building stuff and riding. All my bikes I build are all in the 40s and 50s and 60s. That's it. I don't go anything newer than 60. Uh, it's 60s, in the 60s. And uh, I'm building a bike right now, uh, a frame-off restoration bike, and it's a 1978 Harley Davidson Lowrider, which is a special bike. So it was a bike that I actually had 45 years ago, 19, and I and I let and I let that bike go because my wife came home and she was pregnant with our second child, and we didn't have any health insurance. And I go here, I've got this brand new Harley. So I give the bike up after just a couple days. I said I can't do this, and uh, another guy from my town bought that bike. And he's been the original owner of it for all these years. Well, he died about 12 years ago. So 10 years ago, his wife, Angela, promised me the bike. She goes, Eric would have wanted you to have that bike. It's taken her 10 years for her to finally let it loose. So I got the bike about three, three or four months ago. I, Angela called me up and says, come and pick the bike up. So I got the bike I've waited 45 years to get. So it's really cool. So it's a new, it's a 78 lowrider, but it's a bike that I wanted so bad when I, you know, I was a young dude, man. I was probably in my 28 years. What was I in 78? I was, yeah, I was not 30 years old yet. So it's, I'm really, I can't wait to get that bike done and on the road because uh, me and the wife are going to ride that baby around. It'll be our more of a long bike rider. All my other stuff is uh, bikes that, you know, well, we go to Sturgis, we've spent 10 hour days on the back of a chopper, my wife has, and she's in her late 60s, you know, and she'll, she sits on stuff like this. <laughs> she doesn't know any better. She thinks this is normal. My name is Stacy McClary, and uh, I have my little shop in my backyard, it's called Stacy's Garage.
My name's David Hansen. I own the shop here in Ventura. And a good friend of mine, David Mann, uh, had just moved to Kansas City, and we decided to do a, a custom motorcycle show. So we gave him a call to see if he would do the artwork. He said he was game for it, but he was in the hospital. So I go, no big deal. When you get out, we'll fly you back out here and do the artwork for our show, and we'll get going. Well, he died. So I got my son to help me. My son's my partner. And uh, it's been 17 years now that we've been doing the show. And I'm Tori. I'm the event coordinator. So I'm kind of the glue of all this. Like my dad was saying, you know, he's been doing events here for 40 years. Vintage flat track races, antique motorcycle shows, uh, swamp meets, you name it. Anything motorcycle related. We've been here doing this stuff for a long time. Chopper Fest is, is unique in that uh, everyone here is celebrating the art and the lifestyle of David Mann and like what he did and portrayed in all of his artwork. So, you know, it, as you remember, like all of the bikes are like customs and um, it's not a lot of stock stuff. So you'll all the bikes you'll see here are like fully done up customs. Um, a lot of them are his style. Some of them even replicate bikes that were in his paintings. And um, it's really about just translating like your own creativity into like a build, you know? And whether that's a bike or, um, you know, maybe it's like the, the products you're selling as a vendor, like the parts and stuff, um, or maybe it's like the artists that are in the art show that are doing uh, their own styles, but doing a lot of tribute stuff for David. It's all here, it's all here this weekend. What, what our, at our first show, we had a bunch of the L4 Steros come out here from the Midwest, and that was one of the clubs David uh, was a member of. And uh, one of the guys said it so succinctly, he said, David Mann drew and created motorcycles on paper, which later turned into real life motorcycles. He was like the doing the blueprints out of his head for what was gonna happen in the future. One of our swap meets, a friend of his and mine, another David Hansen, had met his future wife here at the swap meet. And he approached me and said, hey, would there be a way of me getting married at one of your swap meets? And I go, hell yeah, yeah. So David Mann, he talked David Mann into proposing to Jackie. So right over here at the grassy field over here, we had a double wedding and it was, it was, it was quite, a, quite an event. And, and to add to that, they rode in on a knucklehead sidecar, and that bike's here, that bike is here today. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's here. Oh, wow. Yep. It started when I was a kid, when uh, all my friends were starting to ride Harley Davidsons right out of high school, and I wanted something different than a Harley Davidson. And a buddy of mine goes, oh, what about an Indian? And I go, oh, what? And he goes, yeah, an Indian motorcycle. And I, I didn't know anything about it. I was 18 years old. I didn't know what an Indian was. Well, I found out about a gentleman that he was here in town that worked on it. So I went over to his shop and I asked him if he had the Indian for sale. And he kind of looks at me and he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I get persisting. So he goes, here's your broom, sweet night store. I started sweeping the store. One thing led to another. I bought an Indian basket from him, a bunch of parts, put it together over a summer, and I've been an Indian guy ever since. And my shop specializes in Indians and Harley Davidsons. My name's David Hansen. I'm here from Ventura, California.
Hi, my name is uh, Wayne Rick. I am from Whittier, California, and uh, my shop is Moto Blitz. Since the chopper craze back in you know the early 2000s took off, um, I've worked with various painters here in SoCal and uh, doing mainly doing graphics for them. Uh, so yeah, thousands of bikes. There's a bunch of them out there on the show field that I, that I've done as well. Yeah, the helmets. Um, when I started out, everything was airbrush, and uh, I, I've been airbrushing since I was 16. Trans Am hoods, van sides, things like that. And uh, recently, I just kind of got bored with it, I guess, uh, uh, with that that medium, and I kind of wanted to go back to old school uh, brush painting like Frank Frazetta and some of the early masters did. So uh, the helmets, you know, you can pick them up cheap at a yard sale or a swap meet. And uh, I thought that would be a good place for me to, you know, experiment with brush painting using automotive paints now. So uh, all these were painted with House of Colors striping urethanes and uh, brushes, little tiny brushes. It's been a pleasure seeing people's reaction to, you know, something different. I think people are afraid to, you know, you'd be afraid to wear something like that, but I, I wore them. I wore them out and about. It's gonna get chipped, yep. So, you know, why would you want to pay a thousand dollars for a helmet and throw it on, the, you know, risk it? But it happens, you know. Exactly, yeah, it's the same treatment as, you know, an airbrush or uh, a motorcycle paint. Um, everything gets base, uh, then I, I do my graphics, and then uh, it gets clear coated. Usually the helmets, I'll double clear them because the brush strokes uh, take up so much, you know, the rays, you can feel them, you know, after I build up the colors. So it usually takes a couple clear sessions. Uh, I'll have to sand them in between and, uh, you know, to get them a mirror finish like they are. Yeah, now with transfers, it's so easy to put any graphic on any bike, you know. So uh, it, it was fun for me. The subject matter, I, I went all the way back to some of the old masters of the 1800s and early 1900s in France. Um, and uh, use some of their ideas and, and imagery for, for some of the helmets. I, I just, I like the juxtaposition of old and, you know, in a chopper culture, like you wouldn't see that normally. So it's fun for me. This, uh, like this, I, I wanted the helmet to uh, tell a story. I'm a huge Frazetta fan when I grew up you know, Frank, Frank is the man. So I took two of his images, more famous images, the knights battling for the princess. So, you know, I did it kind of medieval theme up front and, uh, you know, it's brush painted like it would have been back in the day. So, you know, every, every helmet has its story. You know, usually something like something like these I'll do um, at the shop when I'm waiting for a base coat or a clear coat to dry or you know in between jobs so it may take me a month to do something like that you know because I'm not working on it constant so it'll be something I'll set aside come back to it paint another character or piece of it so yeah they're, they're usually around a month keeps me um, keeps my mind going, it keeps my hand working, you know, so I'm not just sitting scrolling through Instagram or whatever, I, I, I can, you know, keep working. Since I was a kid with crayons, yeah, I went to art school um, back east and uh, moved here in 97 and have been custom painting motorcycles ever since. I've always uh, had a passion for motorcycles and uh, everything from road racing to uh, you know back road riding and um, when I came out here I, I got involved in the Harley scene uh, 
and uh, it just went from there. I just started, you know, people would ask me to custom paint for them. And uh, so it was a learning experience and uh, uh, it's fun to be able to, you know, have both your loves as, as, you know, your day job and your off time. So the prints, I started doing, um, you know, I wake up early in the morning before the rest of the house wakes up and I'll go out to my studio and have coffee. And uh, I started just doing some pen and ink work um, to, to kind of get away from, uh, you know, the, the motorcycle paint. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, uh, what if I came up with a line of, you know, girls that ride? And so I came up with Moto Blitz. Uh, it's kind of a fictitious, like, girl riding club. And uh, they ride everything from sport bikes to, you know, vintage super bikes to choppers. And so uh, my girlfriend, Tracy, uh, I, I gave it to her. She has prints made. And then I'll go in and, and hand color the prints with brushes. And that's what you're seeing here on some of these. Are, so they're hand embellished. Um, and so, yeah, it's fun. It's, you know, a, a way to not have to sell an original, but, you know, you can sell prints that are personalized. Or, you know, they're all different, uh, different colors and different uh, techniques. My name is Wayne Rex. I am in Whittier, California, and you can find me at Wayne Rex uh, on Instagram. And uh, I have a Shopify store there.
My name is Mike Muller. I, uh, I own a shop and run a shop here off the avenue. It's called Olive Street Specials. Obviously, it's on Olive Street. And uh, we, uh, well, I say we, but I mean me. I build custom bikes for anyone who's got the cash to hang around. And uh, this is a couple of bikes I've put together uh, recently. And here we are at Chopperfest, you know? Started off just doing general fabrication and uh, you know, like I always liked the motorcycles and eventually I built up enough customers where I can focus on just shoppers now, so we are having fun with that. So these are just a couple of the recent bikes I've built that uh, these are owned by local guys, so they're kind enough to bring their bikes around. This is my personal bike, this is a Panhead 64. Honestly, I was building a, uh, a generator shovel for a customer of mine a couple years back and uh, he ended up buying this bike. Um, and I kept telling him, like, you got this bitch in show bike, like, do you need that panhead? And he's like, I probably don't need it. Do you want to buy it? And he gave me a good deal. I traded a bit of work for it. Otherwise, I would never have this. This is just like one of them, those, those come ups that you, you, you find. So I built the Springer by hand, and it was a good little experiment that I've been trying to. I've been meaning to do it for a long time and I finally got the opportunity to do it. So it's my bike, it'll never be finished and uh, I love it. <laughs> I wouldn't give it up for the world, you know? I had a lot of communication with guys that have experience building these front ends so I was able to get a lot of uh, advice about geometry and stuff like that. Brake and trail, you name it. And it just so happened to work out that it was actually the perfect setup. Like. I barely had to modify it at all based on people's advice. And uh, it came out great, man. I had it chromed in the valley and so far so good, you know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. It was fun, man. I loved, I always wanted to have a Springer, but they're so damn expensive. Even, like the vintage ones, obviously, as you might know, like they pay like 1200 bucks minimum and they're always way too long. So I figured, hey, might as well try to build one myself, you know? Honestly, a matter of budget, you know? Like, and it all comes down to like what's affordable. I try to keep my shop like affordable to a lot of blue collar guys or the guys that ride choppers that are into this type of stuff. So I try to keep my prices uh, competitive. And uh, it doesn't always come out like a show bike, but I like to put out like nice riders for people to have get people on the road like basically as quick as I can get them you know satisfy the customer I like to communicate with them like frequently keep them up to date on what's going on get their advice like what what they think they want you know I try to help them out along the way as much as I can I try to be present with the customer you know like that's my goal I, I don't want my customers to be intimidated by talking to me or like getting in touch with me I like to be you know, communicating with them on, on the regular, you know, ke keeping up to date on everything, yeah. So, eventually we become friends in the end, which is great. So, yeah, I met a lot of people on the way, so it's cool, man, yeah. So, my name's Mike Muller, uh, and I own a shop here in Ventura. It's a custom chopper shop, and uh, my Instagram's Olive Street Specials. Hit me up. Happy to talk. Stop by any time at the shop, man. I'm always there, so.
Russell Wilson. This is Sacred Steel Cycles from San Gabriel, California. And we're here at beautiful Chopper Fest, Ventura, California. Actually started with cars, but you can't take them apart, put them on your welding table as easy as a bike. So I quickly learned to switch over to bikes. So it was just kind of that simple. Enjoy like the sheet metal work and the fabrication side of it and the welding and making stuff with my buddies in the garage. It's kind of the same as it was back then. Yeah, I do metalworking as a profession. I'm a member of the five sheet metal workers union and I welder for the county of Los Angeles. So this bike has like been in my head forever, like as a kid, like probably most people. Daddy Roth model kits. You would get different options in the model kit, or we would just cut and move them around and change them. And like that point forward, I'm sure like most people like stock or regular is never good enough for us. That's why I said we got into custom cars and custom bikes. So I had to like revisit this whole idea because it fucking ruined my life. You know? But the uh, Denver style of molding, but this one specifically, like we like the Bubble top fiberglass cars. So, like, if you kind of like dissected it up and moved it around, this is what, in my vision, it would look like. So, this section right here is this with the insert and the wings. We had it cast at the stainless. And I mean, the whole thing is I wanted like really like simple. But since I knew I was doing one color, I needed hard body lines for the pearls to, to play off of. the Dutch rudder. I would recommend you Google it. But uh, yeah, the Discovery Channel, they said you can't call it the Dutch rudder. I said okay. So I painted the Dutch rudder on both sides of the tank so they couldn't blur it out. I think this is the only bike in uh, motorcycle fabrication history that it's, the reveal was blurred, which made people even more interested in it. But uh, it's based on a, a elf. Molding, trying to keep everything really clean. And what's interesting about that bike is you can't really tell from this side, but it has a starter in it. Bit into like a oil tank is all notched out, the pins are all cut out, but it, uh, and it actually works. The way I routed the pipe hides it, but you can go up there and look at it. You can see that there's a starter in there. And um, this bike twist, I was trying to make it like more comfortable and for that everyone can ride so we added the floorboards and uh, it's a foot clutch but it, uh, the tank shifts so it's like not as sketchy as dropping the handle all the way back and right like here so if you get scared you can still kind of grab it and we added a, a front a front full uh, brake we made our own hub and used the v-twin uh, internals for it so i guess kind of like a, a starter chopper for, Someone that just gets started in the foot clutch and kick starting. You do get tired and you can just hit the button. You like start doing shit for TV and like everything has to be different and have a theme and like there's always gonna be uh, like, will they make it in time, blah blah blah, this and that. There's always like a, a deadline. And that's only because like they're only paying for two weeks of fabrication and two weeks of time. So everything has to get finished. That, that time, and that's why I always that the fake rush of the, the, the TV drama. Do you think that takes time? Yeah, that was two weeks of fabrication. So, like, we would, like, when we were doing these, we built all five of these bikes in one summer. So, it would be two weeks, we'd break that apart, we'd go to paint and chrome, and that same day we would start the next build from scratch. 
and then as that one got broken apart, these painted pieces would start coming back, and it was just like almost insane cycle ever. Like it was just nuts. And I'm working my day job the whole time. It's called Sacred Steel Cycles on Discovery Channel. A little chopper series, that, and then that was the bike. This was the finale that I crashed, and the show got canceled. I mean, I was, I was like in bed six months after that. Shattered my hip, a couple vertebrae, all the skin on the side. The issue with what happened is we had a 23-inch tire on it originally on the show. And it was a clincher Model A technology, but uh, the wrong inner tube got put in, a 21 inch inner tube got put in it. So, I mean, and also too, like they're not, we're designed to be moving at three way speeds. So I was like, we're looking up the five, by 80 miles an hour, and I, I see the tire like walking off the rim. Nothing you can do. Try to slow down the best I can. So the tire is walking its way off the rim, and I'm just like trying to keep it up and slow down as best I can. And plus, we're riding the pack at the same time, so like it is a complete clusterfuck. As I start to go down, people are fucking running into each other, running the wall, fucking riding, running me over. Because we were on our way up to Solvang, that was supposed to be the Dutch. Uh, I mean, you build bikes, you ride them, you crash them. It happens. That's what they said this kind of is. This was built, I guess, in my garage. First first build in like five years. Kind of, kind of the comeback special. Get the, get the gang back together and uh, you know, see, see if we still got it. I'm Jason Wilson from Sacred Steel Cycles, uh, San Gabriel, California.